Hi, my name is Tom. I am a maritime English teacher for Gan School Ship in Stavanger, Norway. I'm going to be teaching ship handling today. We're going to be going through the first unit in English for Mariners. Unit 1A, I'm going to be going through some of the parts of the ship which we've gone through before in my Maritime English class. So today we're going to have a little bit of a review. English for Mariners is a recently published book. It was published in 2009. The author is Tony Grice. He's just recently published a new book. It is called English for the Maritime Industry. This was published in 2013, so I'm looking forward to jumping and getting into that. But I thought we would start with the basics, English for Mariners. Of course, it's been adapted. I've changed the curriculum a little bit to adapt it to my own school ship, the MV Motor Vessel Gan in Stavanger, Norway. <clears throat> well, you should have a worksheet in front of you so that you can do the exercises on paper. If you don't, there is a link where you found this YouTube video and it will link you to my Google Drive where you can download the worksheet for exercises one to four. As well, if you want to go through this PowerPoint again on your own, there's also a link to the PowerPoint and you can download that as well. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to do some genius research questions. What I'd like you to do is use the internet, uh, a dictionary, or I hope what you already know to answer the questions below. You'll find these questions on page 14, the first page, exercise one. Here's the questions. When the wind hits a ship amidships, which of these vessels turn towards the winds? Is it a tug, a tanker, or a yacht? What do the words axial and transverse describe? Does that describe rud rudders, sails, propellers? Number three, which of these is pitch? Is it the bow up and stern down? Or is it pow port up or starboard down? Or is the whole ship going up and down? And four, waves from a stern make a ship speed up and slow down. What's this called? Is that yawing, heaving, or surging? And rolling is caused by what? Waves from a beam, winds from a stern, or the ship moving against the current? Okay, you got seven minutes to do the best you can. I'll give you the answers in seven minutes. Here we go. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. Like I picked the wrong week to quit drinking.
Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Wrong week to quit sniffing blue. Alrighty then. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah.
all in good time. Okay, then it's time for us to get back and let's answer these questions. Now, if you just put a circle around the ones you thought was right, that was not what you were supposed to do. You're supposed to go and find something that would give you evidence for why it's the right answer. Maybe something you learned from me already that you should have looked it up. Okay, let's go on. So, when the wind hits a ship amidships, which of these vessels turns to the wind? Well, it's the tanker. Why? Why is the tanker different than tug or a yacht? Well, a yacht is what we call a pleasure craft. Uh, and the tug, if you think, those two have a very similar ship structure. Let's look at a tug. Now, how the wind affects a ship when it hits it sideways, of course, depends on the shape of the ship. When you see a tug has its main superstructure here amidships, when the wind blows against the side of the ship or a beam of the ship, the whole ship will be moved leeway, sideways. But a tanker where it has its superstructure in the aft of the ship, it has the wind when it's blowing a beam sideways. It's going to push that aft section away, but then the front section, the forward section, is going to be twisted into the wind. So that's why these vessels that have their main superstructure aft, when the wind blows against it, the forward section is going to move in the opposite direction into the wind. Okay, so a beam wind, this is looking at a diagram for sailing, but you can see it's called a beam reach when the wind is blowing directly to the side of the vessel. A beam wind like this causes a ship to move leeway. Leeway means sideways, blown sideways off her course. So if you have a vessel that has the main superstructure midships, it's going to be blown completely leeway, sideways. So you see, when you're actually navigating the vessel, you have to account for this wind, this beam wind, when you're steering. You can see here, this is the course that they want to steer, 35 degrees, but you don't say 35, you say 035 degrees when you're giving a course direction. And you have a leeway of five degrees, a wind, a beam, or a beam whim, which is blowing you five degrees. So you have to counter that with a water track of zero, four, zero degrees. It's just elementary navigation. I'm sure we'll get into this later. Okay, so that first question was a little complicated, but you can understand now that a wind blowing a beam of the ship, if it hits the superstructure, if the superstructure is midships, then the whole ship is going to be blown sideways. But if a beam wind hits a tanker where it has its main superstructure aft, it's going to blow the stern away. But as the stern blows away, the forward section gets twisted into the wind, turns into the wind. Okay, question number two. What do the words axial and transverse describe? Is it rudders? sails or propellers? Well, the correct answer is propellers. So what is axial? It means axial thrust. Here you can see a diagram of an inboard engine and the axial thrust from the propeller is the twisting motion, the, the power twisting the propeller shaft. Okay, so that force of the actual twisting is called the axial thrust. It's kind of like the torque of an engine when you're 
putting your foot down on the gas and you get this and the same thing when you're sitting dead in the water and you just floor the <clears throat> accelerator or the throttle on a boat you'll get this pushing you back and that's the thrust pushing you forward is the actual thrust coming out of the back of the propeller but it's actually the axial the axis the twisting of the propeller shaft well then what is transverse well there transverse thrust is then the sideways force that is also made by the propeller as it turns this is called propeller walk so if you can see here, if you have a right-handed propeller, where you can see that the propeller turns in a certain direction, well then the stern of the ship is going to swing to starboard, while the aft will, excuse me, the bow will swing to port. But if you have a left-handed propeller, you have the opposite action. Then the stern will swing to port and the bow will sting to starboard and this is just the action that comes from the movement of the propeller which has to be accounted for when you're moving forward as well now this transverse thrust is definitely most noticeable when power is first applied when you're stopped dead in the water and you're moving but actually much more when you're moving astern than when you're going forward. So I'm sure whenever you've been maneuvering into the quayside with your small pleasure craft, you've noticed the motion of the stern much more when you're going in reverse or going astern, how the stern itself will move. And this is called propeller walk. The actual vessel moves due to the action of the propeller as well. Okay, well, let's go on to question number three. Which of these is pitch is it bow up stern down or is it port up starboard down or is it the whole ship up and down well if you remember we went through ship motions before christmas and bow up stern down is pitch when the whole bow and stern rises and falls with the waves so you can see here i believe this is a fishing factory trawler it looks like in heavy seas and the bow is definitely pitching way down into the wave into the trough of the wave while the stern is right right raising right, rose very very high in the water so that's pitching but what is surging then waves from a stern make a ship's speed up and slow down. This is called surging, okay? Well, heaving, if you remember, heaving is when the whole ship rises up on the top of a wave, and then when it comes down into the trough of a wave, it's going to be going way down. So the whole ship rising and falling is called heaving. So here we have actually a wave. This is the very top called the crest of a wave, and at the very bottom is called the trough of a wave. So surging is when the ship is going up into a crest of a wave, and if it's going down again, it's going to be going forward much faster. But if it's going up into the trough, it's going to usually fall back down, slow down, maybe not go in re reverse, but it's going to slow down. So as it's going over the waves, the whole ship is going to go much, much faster down the crest of a wave, but it's going to go very slow up a trough, and so the speed is going to slow down. So surging actually is the speeding up and slowing down of a ship. We can say it's going forward and moving backwards in a way, yes, but that is surging. Okay, so pitching again, that is the ship's bow and stern rising and falling with the waves. If you can see uh, heaving, that's where the whole ship is rising up and then f on the crest of a wave and then falling down into the trough of a wave. Remember these two words, crest and trough, but surging, that's when the ship is speeding up or going forward, going down a wave and 
slowing down or kind of going in reverse, not really, but slowing down in any case, going up a trough. So moving backwards, well, not going fast as it was before. Okay, that's surging. Okay, well, number five, what's rolling then? Do you remember rolling? Rolling is caused by, oh wait, no, we have yawing. Yawing, if you remember, that was the effect where you have the whole bow being pushed by wind and waves, either port or starboard. So when you're steering at the helm of a vessel, you've got to counter for this yawing action by steadying your course the whole time because the wind and the waves will be pushing your bow in one direction, either going starboard or port, and you've got to counter that. Here was pitch again, where the whole nose goes up and down, the tail as well. And here's rolling. Rolling is when you're falling and rising on your port and starboard sides. So number five, rolling is caused by, what would you say here? Waves abeam, waves astern, or ship moving against the current. Well, if you remember, a beam, anything a beam is coming to the side of a ship. So rolling, if that is where the port and starboard sides are falling and rising, it would be waves coming from the side that would be doing that. For example, in this picture here, you have a beautiful galleon almost capsizing from the intense waves hitting it a beam. That's a key word that we're learning today. Wind from astern, well, that's coming from the back of the ship, and that would cause more pitching than rolling. And the ship moving against the current, I don't think so. Okay, so if you can try to remember these one, two, three, four, five different ship motions, that would be great. Okay, here's another exercise. This is exercise two and three on page 15. This is also a review. What I'd like you to do is take these words and put them on the right letter. And if you know any other parts of the ship that you remember from before, go ahead and put an arrow and name those as well. That would be terrific. But as well, I'd like you to write down these terms, port side, starboard side, dead astern, abaft, after end, and forward end, where you think they belong. I recommend you use a pencil to start with because you never know. You might not quite get it right the first time, but I'll give you the answers in three minutes. You have three minutes to put these words by the correct letter of the alphabet. Add any words that you remember about a ship. As well, place these words correctly on the diagram. Again, just don't guess, use anything you can, internet or your homework from before, to try to get it correctly. We'll be back in three minutes. I said I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I said I want the truth. You can't handle the truth.
Cool. Another acid flashback. Man, I need to be driving a bus right now. Let's teach this puppy. Here we go. So did you remember the parts of the ship? Well, at the very aft end of the ship, or after end of the ship, here we have the stern. Okay? And then, as we move forwards, you have this part of the ship here, or down here, excuse me, we'll just go ahead with the letters. We have, at the after end of the ship, the rudder which actually steers the ship, okay? And we talked about before, here is the propeller, which gives us propulsion. So the word propeller and propulsion belong together. It's what moves the ship forward. To qualify to be a vessel, it has to be under its own power. So if it's a vessel, it has to have propulsion, some sort of propulsion system. Propeller is just one type and the rudder is what steers the vessel okay and then we have the whole or well, actually the bottom of the vessel poking out below here is called the keel so the very bottom it's usually a ridge on the bottom of a vessel is called the keel the bottom most part of the vessel is called the keel and then if you remember up here we have this actually looks more like a crane to me, but the book says it's a davit, so we'll agree with them just because they're the authors. But uh, yeah, this could be, actually it could even be a derrick, but we'll just say it's a davit. A davit is usually used to launch lifeboats off of a ship. But up here, F, this is, and here Tony is saying the bows, the most forward point or the point that is most forward on the ship is called the bows. Yes. Okay. And then is this a container ship? It doesn't look so much. It looks like a multi-purpose dry cargo vessel, but these are definitely containers on its main deck. The deck that covers the main working surface is called the weather deck or the main deck. So these are containers. And then here we have the bridge up on the top of this structure here. Do you remember what this structure is called? The bridge. Okay, well, did you remember any other words that you could point out on this diagram? Well, let's take a look. Um, well, we have the port side and starboard side. That the 
right side of the vessel looking forward is the starboard side. The left side of the vessel looking forward is the port side. Okay, and so we have right directly behind the vessel is called dead astern. We can also say right directly in front of or forward is dead ahead of the vessel. So that's our terms, dead, dead astern, and that goes for dead ahead as well. Abaft means towards the rear of the ship. You have aft, which is in the very rear of the ship, but abaft is towards the rear of the ship. So I hope you looked that one up if you had time. And after end is another word for the stern. You can say the aft end or the after end. And forward end is another word for the bows or the bow, the forward point, most forward on the ship, the forward end of the ship. So when they say make ready for and aft, they're talking about the forward end, the bows, and the after end, the aft. Okay, so do you remember any other things that you could point out on a ship? Well, if you look at these arrows here, can you just tell me what we are looking at when we point these arrows here? Well, first of all, the smoke or the exhaust that comes out of what's normally called a chimney, but on a vessel that is called a, a funnel. Or you can also say smokestack or stacks is what it's called today, a funnel. Okay, and then here, this on the old sailing ships, a sail was on a mast, right? But this is now today called the radar mast. Does anybody know what these holes are that you look out of? Does anybody know what they are? And they're, well, they're called portholes. And side scuttles, that's just a very broad term. It includes any covered or uncovered hole in the side of the vessel, side scuttle. But portholes, portholes are the holes that we look out, usually covered with glass, to see outside, okay? And then what about this one here? A hatchway leading below deck. It's kind of hard to see on this diagram here, but that's a new word for us. It's called a companionway. A companionway is a raised or windowed hatchway in the ship's deck. You see these more on the old type ships, galleons, but they're still on modern ships. If it's a raised entrance into the below decks, it's called a companionway. Here you can see it's windowed and raised and usually a ladder going directly down into the decks below. Okay, so that's a companion way. All right, let's see. Does anybody remember what the... Oh, yeah, we have the bows, but here is the bulbous bow. And the forward bow is a bows forward end of the ship, but the bulbous bow is the part of the hull which is sticking forward most out in the water for stability generally. Does anybody remember what the forward mooring station is called? That's right, the foc'sle. Okay, and these things here that keep you from falling off the ship in heavy waves, something for you to hold on to. Remember, one hand for yourself, one hand for the ship at all times. What do you call these things that keep you from falling off the ship? That's right, a railing. And we said the very bottom of the ship is called the keel. But what do you call the body of the ship? The whole body of the ship is called the hull. hull. And then what is this major section here where you find accommodation? You find the galley, generally find the bridge, your quarters. It's called the superstructure. Right. And then the aft mooring section. What do we call the aft mooring section where you go to moor the ship aft on the after end? It's called the poop deck. Great. Good job. Okay. <clears throat> we have another exercise. Exercise four. Now you're only going to get two minutes. What I want you to do is match the words we just went through to the definitions here. Okay. Two minutes. Let's do this. You're crazy!
I'll be back. Houston, we have a problem. Oh, there's no problem here at all. Okay, let's go ahead and match these words up. The bows we already have. That's what we talked about is the point that is most forward. Tony Grice is saying bows. I would say bow, but okay. So the stern is the most rear then, the rear part of the ship. It's the actual place that you're going. You're going to the bow or you're going to the stern, the actual place on the ship. So we talked about the right side. No, the left side of the ship is the port side the, when you're looking forward. And the right side is called the starboard side. Okay, so the left side of the ship looking forward is port side, the right side starboard. Okay, and then aft. Aft is a direction. So if you're walking to the stern, you're walking towards the rear. You're walking aft on the ship. Okay? But if you're walking towards the bow, you're going to be walking towards the front. You're going to be walking forward. Okay? Great. Now, so now hull is the actual skin. The plating of the ship is the hull. That's what we call the body. Usually metal plates riveted together but could be welded together as well. And now the very ridge, the very bottom of the hull is called the keel. It's a projection that runs at the very bottom of the ship. Okay, bridge, generally called the navigation bridge, is the command center, the command station of the vessel where you find navigation, but also communications. Yeah, it's usually an integrated bridge which has many different functions. A hatchway, we've talked about hatches before, but a hatchway is an opening in the deck. And galley, what you would call in normal English a kitchen, galley is the place where you make food on board. And a windlass, don't confuse the windlass with the winch. The windlass is a machine to move heavy things like an anchor. Also on fishing vessels, it can be used to move nets. It's different. The winch is used to pull in and let go of mooring lines, but the windlass is used for anchors or for nets. And then quarters, that's your living area. That's where your living quarters, another word for your cabin. Okay, great, good job. I hope you enjoyed your lesson today and you learned something. And we'll see you again next time.
bye-bye for now.